Hi guys, it's Mina, welcome back. We have today a 30 by 40 inch canvas that we're gonna be working on. Um, I wanted to show you how we work out how much paint we use in ounces. So you multiply 30 by 40, you end up with 1200, and then you divide the 1200 by 28. And that gives you 42.85 ounces of paint needed to cover a 30 by 40 canvas. So that's what we're gonna be shooting for. Um, my colors today, well this color palette is inspired by this little tiny tube of Golden's green gold paint. This is the, the heavy body one. And uh, it's a very it's a very interesting color. It's not one of my usual colors, but I've seen it used by several artists and it's beautiful all the time. So I wanted to play with it and try it. And uh, it's gonna be fun. Um, the other colors I'm using today are Golden's Payne's Gray. My pouring medium is Liquitex Gloss Medium and Varnish, and Floetrol, and some water. This is leaving a mound on a mound on a mound. I also have here DecoArt Americana Decor Metallics in 24 karat gold, leaving a mound on a mound on a mound. I have Arteza, is it Deep Green? Deep Green? Yeah, Arteza Deep Green. Which is very turquoisey looking. So I think this is gonna be cool. Then I have, this one is also Arteza. This is apricot, light apricot. Very pretty color. And I have softened this a little bit with um, some of my white, which I'll show you now. This is the Decor Americana Decor Satin Enamels in pure white mixed with Artist Loft White. So, and then here is the star of the show for today, Golden's Green Gold. Um, I did put a little bit of the satin enamels in here and I got to tell you this one's changed so many times when I first added it to the pouring medium it was one color and then when I put the flow troll in it was a completely other color and then I added a little bit of white and it changed well I knew it was going to change that time but it changed dramatically from what I expected so it's very shifty so <laughs> okay I told you all the colors I told you the canvas size let's go ahead and start I'm going to do a fantasy pour again so we need 43 ounces of paint to cover this canvas. This cup is 16 ounces. So one full cup would be 16 ounces. Two full cups would be 32 ounces. If I had three full cups, it would be 48 ounces. But if we only use about 10 ounces of paint right there, that's a cup and a quarter, that'll be our 43 ounce mark. 42 ounce, 43 ounce mark. So that's kind of what I'm shooting for. If we did go all the way up, I'm not that concerned about six ounces of paint. It's a big canvas, so, and the more actual, it's better to have a little bit extra paint as insurance, because that way you can decide what you want to keep. You don't have to work very, very hard to stretch it all the way across the other side of the canvas and stretch things out that aren't good to be stretched out. So I'd rather have a little bit of insurance and be able to have the design that I want. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, I really like the Payne's Gray and the centers. Well, it's not really a center, but I guess it, everything has a beginning, right? So, and then I'm going to go with some of the pure white. And then we are going to go with some light apricot. I like that sound. I know it's weird, but... <laughs> okay, now we're going to use that green gold. To put in some of the 24 karat after that. And we're gonna go, I didn't do my dark green yet. So then now we're gonna use the green, the deep green from Arteza. And I'm putting nice thick layers in, I'm not doing really thin layers of anything. So let's see, I think I want to put a little bit of white in between this one and then I'm gonna go back to the Payne's Gray again. So when I am layering the cups, I'm looking for contrast between the colors. You don't want to put two things that are very, very similar next to each other, because then they're just going to blend into each other and you're not going to be able to see anything. So let's go with the gold. And then let's go with the green gold this time here. Some apricot, and some white, 
Okay. I'm going to end it with a little bit. This is getting very full. A little bit more of that deep green. Okay. So, I'm going to pour a little bit of a puddle here. I kind of want to just do a fantasy pour in the center in one spot, and then I want to spread that out. So, let's see how this goes. So, when I do the straight pour part, I'm going to move my arm up higher so it's coming down harder and making more cells. And when I get into the ring pour part, I'm going to get closer to the canvas. Okay. Here we go. seaweed again. <laughs> okay, let's stop there. Okay. All right. So that's cool. We obviously need a couple more of these before we're done, but I like that. I'm going to sit there and let it develop a little bit, and I'm going to fill up this cup a little bit faster now. You don't want to waste anybody's time, yours, mine, or anyone else. I might change up the layers and the order on this side a little bit but still using that basic principle of contrast. So I don't want to put the apricot and the gold together right next to each other because they're very similar. So if you do want those two together, then here, like I put a layer of white. Now I could go back to the gold if I wanted to, but I don't. So we're going to go back to green. Hello, Jen. What are you, baby? Put a little puddle over here. Hi, honey. Cool. I love that. So that was like a lot of straight pour and then a ring pour in the center. That's very cool. I like that. Okay, last cup. We only need 10 more ounces. I don't actually have all that much paint left, so we may only get 10 ounces. And that's fine. Because right now we probably have enough on there. Almost. That's the last little bit of green. So, I'm going to skip the gold puddle this one, and I'm going to do this one right here. Okay. Same thing again. Ring pour, or straight pour from up high, and then I'm going to switch to a ring pour at the end. Let's do them this way. That's so pretty. Oh my gosh. Okay. So that's really cool. There's a little bit of Payne's Gray in the bottom of this one. I'm just going to go around the edge on this as a flow extender. Because I like that contrast and I don't want to lose all of this beautiful straight pour we've got going on. So the only other thing I'm going to do is add some water to the little bit of gold that I have left. Thin it out a bit. And we're going to use that as a flow extender around the whole thing. There's still a lot of white space on here. It's kind of freaking me out just a little bit, to be honest with you. I 
think uh, I'm going to use the rest of this apricot that I have left. I'm going to thin it out just a little bit, and I'm going to go around just to fill up some of this space to give the paint something to slide on. Because the way that you keep this pretty center, you keep this part small and tight, and knowing that you're going to tilt off most of the outside of it to stretch this out. So, wow, this is so pretty in here. I love, it's like, like Caesar's crown or something, these laurels. Very cool. It's a really neat effect. And this is one of the benefits about using pouring medium in with your paint and not just Floetrol. If you use just Floetrol and you do this, it might work, but then when it starts to spread out, it's all going to just go away in a not a good way. So, or spread out and not be the same thing that you wanted it to be. So do some movie magic. In the meantime, please enjoy the beautiful jackhammer music. There's your movie magic. All right, let's, my paint is of course trying to go on vacation and go that way. So I'm gonna move it back this way first. And sort of see where the weight of the paint is. It's mostly in the middle of the canvas. Let's go off that way a little bit. Because I like these two, I want to stretch these two out more than I want to stretch that out. Actually, you know what, I'm going to go the other way first. I want to take these two up and over on that corner and get it hooked on and keep that part of the design. Okay, so we're going to take this part down this way first. Do you see those little cells popping? <laughs> okay, just nice and easy and slow. The goal is not to lose that part. The goal is to hook that part on and have it stretch out so that we keep that part of the design. Okay, and now we're going to come back sharply. Yeah. And I'm going to bring the weight of the paint back to the middle and stretch it out over there. That's so cool. <laughs> Look at that, that's so pretty. Okay, let me turn it again. Oops, get back up on the table. Okay, so now the weight of our paint is right about here. This part, since we've hooked it onto this corner and grabbed the corner and gone over, is hopefully going to stay like this. If anything, it might just stretch out a little bit more. But this is pretty much set now. It's it's That's where it's going to stay. So now I kind of want to go off that side and get some of this off to stretch this part out a little bit too. Okay. keep that dark blue in there so Come on. There we go. Bring the paint back towards the middle okay. now I like this what's going on here so I want to stretch that out and grab the corner there and then we'll take care of that last one It's just sliding nice and easy over there. I'm going to shove it back this way first to open that up a little bit. And then we'll go off. I'll 
I'll get that corner in a second. It's okay. Okay. So we're going to take the weight of the paint back towards the middle again. And bring that part back down. I love that that straight pour is opening up there with those pretty cells inside. And this center is stretching out like that. That's cool. Okay. Okay, and we're gonna go off that bottom corner there. I like that the part Payne's gray is opening up in the center with all those cute little cells coming out. I just dripped green paint on my toes and it's cold. <laughs> okay, that's cool. And now, guess what I'm gonna do? <laughs> I'm gonna stretch this part out. This is awesome though. I like how this is working. This is really neat. Okay, so let's just bring this back to the midline. Go that way just a little bit. And see, now we can sort of play with how much of this do we want to keep and how much of this do we want. Which one do we want more? Because that's still what's moving, and that's awesome. Because that's the pain, the weight of it is right in the middle of the canvas, and that means I can tell it where I want it to go. I can push it around if there's something I don't like, I can take it off. If there's something I do like, I can stretch it out. I like how this is, though, right now, to be honest with you, though. I like this part, I like this part a lot. I love that, and that part up there is beautiful. I wouldn't mind stretching that top part out a little bit, but I don't want it to look like a Y. Let's see. Okay, so now I want to take this part at the top down that way just a little bit and see how it looks. I don't want to compress all of that too much though, and I may not like it at all, but let's just see. Maybe we can stretch it out and then we'll push part, that part back. a lot like that. We get some really cute little gold cells coming up on the corner. Okay, so that's good. I'm happy with that. I like how it looks. Not my usual colors with a lot of the the yellow, so that yellow is the green gold and the white combined. It's very interesting. So I don't see a lot of the 24 karat. I do in here. Let me wipe my hands so I don't drip. We haven't torched it yet. Let's torch it now. These are so cute, all these little cells coming up along the corner and the edge. And over here, ooh, I love those. There's some cute ones over here too, and I love that corner. Let me just stretch them out real fast. That stretches the top out, but doesn't allow us time to get all that off at the bottom. And I want to do this before I torch it, because once I torch it, I don't want to tilt it anymore. Right. 
so there's just one thing that I'm not crazy about over here. These sort of like amoeba looking I think that's really cool. I like it a lot. It's very vibrant, very fresh looking. More spring than fall, but, <laughs> but you know, you get obsessed with a color, you start getting intri intrigued is a better color. Intrigued by the green gold. And I am ex intrigued by its color shiftiness, how it changes. And uh, so I might have to explore that some more. I really like this one though. This is definitely my favorite part though. That Payne's gray, straight pour, with all those tiny little cells coming up in the gold and in the green gold and in the turquoise. They're really, really cute. And over here we still have this sort of seaweed fronds, Caesar's laurel crown effect going on. That's so pretty though. It's like these, these little, almost like a feather with like a gold edge around the very end and then there's a layer of white and then there's some of that green gold and then there's like a darker, that darker green mixed with the Payne's Gray. Very, very pretty individual little areas. So this is cool. Over here is beautiful. This whole where it got more stretched out and it was the straight pour. It's that very pebbly finish. This part I love right there where it's gone very turquoisey. Just gorgeous with these pretty cells popping up and the cells have like dark navy centers and then there's a few different colors of rings around them and uh, then there's all these layers of rock like looking like rock very cool in here with the pebbly sort of at this part where the panes mixed with the gold gave us that sort of brownish hue in there which is very cool I thought about adding Van Dyke Brown to the palette but I'm glad that I didn't because I can still get a darker shadow color a depth with the Payne's Gray and the gold together. So instead of making that as a mistake, I used it as a feature this time. I knew it was going to happen and didn't want to add the brown. So I did this right in here. It's so cool though. I'm just going to kind of straighten that. There you go. This is beautiful where that the Payne's is mixed with the gold and with that green gold is very pretty. This is very bright and happy. I love the center part of that straight pour where everything's sort of stretched out a little bit and there's these big fat pebbly cells in between the lines is awesome. And I like the little gold cells on the corners. I like this more solid stripey part separating where the three pores were. So this is very cool. It's nice and soft up there. It's a nice balance for this dark blue, but there's also a lot of color in those. There's, I see a teal color, which is from the, the green with the gold. Or the apricot was in here too. I don't actually see apricot, but it blended with a lot of stuff and made a lot of really cool colors. So that's awesome. I like this one a lot. Um, I'll take the camera down and I'll take some close-ups for you and then I will show you when it's dry. Thanks for hanging out guys. I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so this is a few days later. This one actually took a little bit longer to dry than usual because it hasn't been as hot here. So we're definitely coming into fall weather. Uh, I'm really happy with how this one turned out. I really, I mean, it's definitely out of my comfort zone color palette wise, but I really, really like so many different parts of this. I love this dark blue, of the Payne's gray with the straight pour. It just came out so cool and all these tiny little cells all over it in the green gold and the 24 karat. It's so pretty up there. It's nice and soft and shimmery. You can see the gold kind of blinging in the sun. This is full sun now. I love this part. This is the part I showed you guys in the little sneak preview. That looked like calla lilies to me. Very pretty. So again, that's the end of the cup and the, the pour when I'm just doing that sort of like back and forth, up and down sort of motion. I really like these lines in the center. Very, very cool. A lot of depth in there. A lot of... I don't know if you can see that gold blinging or not, but it's really pretty. And there's... see that brownish color is where I was telling you with the Payne's Gray 
mixed with the 24 karat gold. And I knew that was going to happen, which is kind of awesome. <laughs> and, um, anyway, this other little cluster is really, really pretty too. Very sweet, like a little tree. But there's, you can see the apricot in there. And the white with the satin enamels. Very cool. I love this part. Right here. This is just ee, mm, yummy. Delicious. <laughs> I can fall in love with sections of a painting. It's so pretty. I love that like pebbly this sort of rocks or something. This part I'm not so crazy about, but that's okay. We just don't have to look over there. We can look over here again. <laughs> but really beautiful colors in here. A lot of depth. There's that Arteza dark green. And so this sort of lime green color, this is the green gold where I mixed it with a little bit of white and changed it a bit. But look at those cool little cells in there. Is it focusing? can't see very well with the sun. Anyways, I like how this one turned out. It's really neat. Very interesting. You know, so step outside your comfort zone once in a while. Play with something that's not your favorite color. You might be actually very surprised. I like green. Light green. And I have this sort of... No. <laughs> but it worked. And that's cool. So, you know, when choosing your color palettes, pick... No, I, that's how I usually do it. I usually get obsessed with one color and then sort of build off of that what would work with it. Like I had the green gold, so obviously I needed a darker green. And I knew I wanted the Payne's Gray in there. And for contrast, I wanted something lighter, so I did use the apricot and then I had the white in there. Also because I think I had white as my base coat too, yeah. So those are very pretty parts in this one. I really like that a lot. So, very cool experiment. It's so cool in here. All these tiny little cells and then this part where it really looks like calla lilies. That's such a trip. Really beautiful. So, this one looks like a peace symbol to me. So I'm calling this one green peace. And I hope you all have a beautiful day. If we could all just sort of take a moment and wish for peace in the world. Let people love and care about each other. So, <laughs> I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye.